of the world's biggest problems, procrastination. And why do we procrastinate? It's because when we even just think about things we don't like or don't want to do, it can activate a feeling of pain in the insular cortex. You turn your attention to something more pleasant and the result is you feel happier almost instantly. What's the most effective method? It is the Pomodoro technique. I hear from thousands and thousands of students from learning how to learn and they will often mention specifically that this Pomodoro technique was amazing in helping them. All you need to do is just turn off all distractions so nothing popping up on your cell phone, nothing popping up on your computer. Then set a timer for 25 minutes and focus as effectively as you can for those 25 minutes. Do the meditation thing. If a distracting thought arises, just let it go by and return your focus to whatever you're working on. When you're done, those last five minutes or so, give yourself a reward. When you take that five minutes of reward, you really want to do nothing that involves focus. If you're making a cup of tea, that's okay. It's nothing demanding. Or going out and walking a little bit. Or just resting and thinking. When you are in the default mode, somehow that allows that information to really kind of percolate in. After five minutes, you can return to focus. What people really like to do is one Pomodoro, another, another, and each followed by a five-minute break. But then after the fourth Pomodoro, they take a half an hour break. This is a very effective technique for students. When you're learning, we can actually see the brain changing. So this is a dendrite, the leg of that neuron. This is a dendritic spine. So you see all these dendritic spines. This is before learning and before sleep. After learning and after sleep, look, right here, there's a new dendritic spine that wasn't there before. And this dendritic spine is thicker. It's got a thicker end on it to students. They should do their studies during the day as they normally do. Right before they go to sleep, they should pull to mind, like take two minutes or so, and retrieve the key ideas that they are trying to learn, understand, or remember. There are two types of learners. There's what I call race car learners. They often have a very large capacity working memory. Then we've got hiker learners. They can still get to the same place, but they're sometimes much slower in how they think about it. But think about how that hiker learns. They're much slower, but they can reach out, they can touch the leaves on the trees, they can smell the pine in the air, they can hear the birds, completely different experience from the race car driver and in some ways much richer and deeper. The world needs both types of learners. In fact, slower learners, they forget. They learn something and that night they go to sleep, but they forget, they have to relearn it. The fast learner doesn't forget. But when the slow learner has to relearn the stuff the next day, they're more flexible about what they've learned because they have to kind of re keep reformulating. So as it turns out, research shows fast thinkers are often less flexible whereas slower thinkers can be more flexible and, as a result, more accurate in their thinking.